Last time, we took a look at how to make a simple arcade front end using Emulation Station, but you probably are wondering, I can make this a little bit better. After all, the last time I went to an arcade, they had awesome menus with crazy special effects and graphics just so you can select a game, and that's what really sells the MAME experience, being able to see an arcade and be attracted to it. Or in this case, the software we're going to look into is a simple little program called Attract Mode. So expect this to be a part two on how to create your own arcade front end, but this time focusing on a different piece of software known as Attract Mode. Now Attract Mode is specifically made for those who want a great looking theme to their whole arcade picking experience, and mostly directed to making your own arcade cabinets everywhere, as you can see from the themes and layouts that these wonderful people have made. But what we're going to do today is look at the Windows version and see how you can customize it from any other computer out there. So for example, I have one of the projects that I completed was taking an old netbook and turning it into an arcade center for the back of my my car so that passengers can be able to play old school games using the two controllers that I provided. Another great way to pass the time on those long trips home. So how about we get started shall we? So the first program we're going to want to download is Attract Mode itself which you can find at attractmode.org where you can find several videos displaying some neat themes you can download as well as an about page with very detailed information about what kind of coding languages this program uses. There's also a forum, so if you have any questions about how to set up a track mode in general, or if you want to discuss the latest themes, layouts, or any kind of features, the community is really helpful in that regard. So anyway, we're going to go to download and select the operating system that we're using. And we're just going to drag our zip file that we just downloaded onto the desktop. This is purely for organizational purposes, so do what you will. The next thing we're going to download is our emulators, or in this case, we're just going to use one emulator, known as BizHawk. I talked about BizHawk in the past, as it's a multi-system emulator, so the games we have planned to play on here will work definitely with this emulator. So the first thing we're going to download is the BizHawk prerequisites. So this will install a bunch of runtimes and video programs that run in the background of Windows so that BizHawk can run properly. We are then going to open our BizHawk prerequisite zip and drag it into the desktop. And then we're going to run it so that all the runtimes can be installed. This includes Visual, C++, .NET, DirectX, all that jazz. Just let it do its thing, and then once it's complete, you can hit close. We're also going to unzip BizHawk into its own folder. And then we're going to open it so that we can configure some options. For controller purposes, I have an Xbox 360 controller already plugged in, so BizHawk is already pre-configured to use this controller for any game that supports it. But regardless, we're going to configure some options. We're first going to set up an exit program hotkey so that whenever we're done playing, it'll immediately go back to attract mode. So under configure, go to configure hotkeys and under the general tab, go to exit program and select a controller input so that every time you press that certain button, it'll go back to attract mode. Then hit save. And next we're going to set it so that every time we open a game on it, it'll open in full screen mode. So we're going to go to customize and then we're going to hit start full screen and then hit save again. But for this example, I'm not going to do that since we want to see the game running. And then finally, we're going to set up our firmwares. Firmwares, if you don't know, are basically BIOS files so that in order for certain games to run, we'll need to have these files to support it. For example, we're going to need a PlayStation and Genesis BIOS file. So I recommend going to Google and searching for the correct BIOS files. It shouldn't be that hard, but once you do, we're going to place them in this firmware folder. And then under configure again, we're going to go to firmwares and hit scan. They should pop up, but if they don't, you're going to have to right click on one of them and select set customization and then select your BIOS file. And then the game should load properly. So now we pre-configured our emulator, which will work best for the games that we have provided. And that's the next step we're going to move on to, selecting what games we want to run in attract mode. In this case, I'm going to select Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, Master System, Genesis, and PlayStation games. And then we're going to put each game in its own separate system folder, all organized. 
And now lastly, we're going to find our themes that we want for our arcade. In this case, I found some great themes that can display both system selection as well as for each system. So I went to this website called Onyx Arcade, which has a lot of great resources for their own themes for attract mode. In this case, I selected the two that are on the site. So we're going to download these two themes, one called Invatu, or I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm sorry, and Flat Blue. As you can see from these pictures, they run great and they look great for any kind of screen size. And I highly recommend going to this website to support the creator of these themes and checking out some of their other work as well. These also work great on arcade screens. I highly recommend checking them out. But of course, if you need download links, they'll be in the description below. But download these themes as they come in zip files. Now I mentioned before that attract mode is extremely customizable. So in this case, we're gonna download some of our own box art flyer art, fan art, anything that'll look great with this whole setup. Luckily there's a website dedicated to that as you can download packs of artwork on your own from something called mumovies.com where it provides zip files upon zip files of artwork packs, video snaps, preview art, all that for your own arcade setup. I also recommend if you're looking for video previews going to YouTube and looking up video snaps for a certain game. If you find some YouTube downloader out there, you can definitely use that to download some of these snaps, aka video previews if you haven't caught on. So now we're finally gonna unzip attract mode into its own folder. And once we do that, we're gonna open up attract mode. Select the right language setting that you want and we're presented with the main attract mode menu. For this sake, we're gonna go and select windowed mode so we can easily manipulate windows. We're just configuring this after all, this isn't gonna be final. And we're gonna select our controls. And with our Xbox 360 controller at hand, we're gonna select all the proper inputs for selecting, going back, and all four movements to select our games from. It's pretty easy to select these controls, but oftentimes when people are configuring this, they often forget to do so. Otherwise, they would have to use the keyboard. So this is just a little nice piece of advice so you don't forget. You can close out of this program anytime you want. It's not gonna ruin anything that you've already done. So back into the attract mode folder, we're gonna look at a folder they're called emulators and as you can see there's a bunch of text files displaying a bunch of emulators already pre-configured think of them as skeleton templates but for now we're just going to delete all of them as we're going to create our own don't worry this is pretty easy just follow along as exactly as i say so we're going to go back into attract mode and select emulators and then select add emulator enter the name in this case we're going to do nintendo first and a bunch of options are going to pop up. Basically for the majority of this configuration, we're going to have to enter a lot of file paths. I also recommend opening up a notepad file or note plus plus if you have that, just for copy and paste purposes. And find our emulator. So in case you don't know, in Windows, you can copy the file path in your Windows Explorer and paste it anywhere you want. So what we're going to do is copy this text and put it in our notepad file and then backslash muhawk.exe. Now we're going to copy this text and back in attract mode, we're going to go into the executable line, press enter so we're able to type something and paste it or control V. Now you can also use this method for copying more file paths. For example, we're going to need to do one for where our ROMs are. So doing the same method, we're going to go to our ROMs folder in attract mode, copy that file path, and put it in attract mode, the same way that we did with our emulator. Next, make sure that the ROM extensions, in this case since it's a zip file, we don't need to change it, and now the system identifier and the info source. Now, me personally, I like to use a site called thegamesdatabase.net. This is basically an encyclopedia of all the games that have ever been released on any system you can imagine. So we're going to go to the website and go to platforms. And since we're doing Nintendo, we got to look up the Nintendo Entertainment System. You can easily do Control F and typing in Nintendo to find it on this massive list and we're gonna copy this name and in the system identifier we're gonna paste it and under info source we're gonna hit enter and using the arrow keys or your controller go up and down to select the games db.net 
This will be important for scraping artwork later. As for all this stuff, we're going to leave it blank for now. And then we're going to select Generate Collection slash ROM List and hit Enter. Now the program will start collecting information related to each ROM we have in the ROMs folder. So in this case, all the available information for Nintendo games that we have. After this is done, we're going to go one step down and select Scrape Artwork. This may take a little bit longer because now it's downloading all the proper artwork for each game that it can. But once that's done, now we're gonna select our themes. Oh wait, we haven't installed those yet, my bad. So in these zip files that we downloaded, we're gonna unzip them, and in the attract mode folder, we're gonna unzip them into the layouts folder. Just like so. Now we're gonna go into displays, select the system that we just did, and all the way up, we're gonna select layout, and use up and down to select Envato that we just downloaded then select back. And there we go. We just did our first system. And now for the tedious part, as you're gonna have to do every single step that I just did for Nintendo that we plan to put into a track mode. Some notes I can give you is that you have to pay attention to the file formats if you want them to load properly. As for PlayStation games, there's the .q file and the .iso file that you're going to have to look out for. You can ignore the bin file. For the N64 games, we're going to use three different file types, as you can see, separated by semicolons. But after you do these steps, we're finally going to load a track mode and see what it looks like. As you can see, using the easiest method possible, the artwork is loading in properly. Although there are some instances where the artwork is missing and it's replaced with an old standby system icon, I guess. But so far for some games, they look great, like the marquee, the wheel art, the snap art, and the nice background touch as well. So let's test out some games. So we're going to select Super Mario Brothers. And as you can see, it loads into BizHawk perfectly. Now let's try out a PlayStation game. And as you can see, it's loading in quite nicely. If you run into errors, I suggest going into the forums on Attract Mode in case you need any help with anything. But so far, it's looking decent and the games are loading in properly. But now we're gonna take it one step further and really customize this piece of software into what it could be by putting in our own artwork that we downloaded so that it really makes it pop. So from the configuration options, you can see the different types of artwork that this theme supports and the names of each piece of artwork. We have the wheel art, the background art, the video or game snaps that are on the arcade cabinet itself, and the marquees that show up whenever a game is there. So we're gonna fully customize this setup, and then later we're gonna do the system select using the flat blue theme, which is significantly easier, but I'll save that till the end. So going back to our attract mode folder, we're gonna enter the folder called scraper. This is what's created when we ran the scraper for each of our systems. It creates a folder, and inside those folders are other folders displaying flyer art, marquee art, snap art and wheel art. So we're going to use this same template, but we're going to go into our ROMs folders and create the same folder structure that's in these folders. Let me demonstrate. We're going to use the N64 as an example of this. So now that we made our folders, we're going to drag the specific artwork that we have into each one of those folders. So looking back at this configuration window, what I would like is for the gameplay video to show up on the arcade screen. Instead of different game titles as marquees, I just want a system on top of the cabinet. If you want, you can also put different game marquees on there if you want. Just up to you, but this is a personal taste. For the background, I'm gonna go with box art to show some of the artwork in general, although there is an option to put videos back there as well. Another option I had in mind was just putting the title screen on the screen cabinet itself. But like I said, this theme is very customizable, so do what you will. But we're going to go with this example. So for flyer artwork, I decided to use gameplay stills. I should also mention that it's also very important to name every piece of artwork you have in these folders the same name as the ROM itself. So keep that in mind when going through this. For the marquee, I decided to use the N64 logo. Make sure you have the same name as the emulator file itself for any piece of artwork that you're going to use in the game select display. For snaps, I'm going to use actual gameplay that'll display on the arcade cabinet itself. 
And then finally, wheel art, I'm going to use the game logos that'll be displayed when selecting a game. So now we're going to open attract mode, and in the main menu, we're going to select tab. And this will bring up the main configuration window again. We're going to go back to emulators, and then we're going to go to N64. And now we're going to scroll all the way down to flyer. This is where we're going to set our file paths to our certain artwork that we're going to use. So in this case, for our flyer artwork, we're going to select the folder where it says flyer, and so on and so on. For snaps, we're also going to put the flyer file path as well. In order to separate file paths, we are going to use the semicolon. But once we do that, we're going to go back and then back. And as you can see, we're starting to get there. With the video being displayed on the arcade cabinet itself and our artwork loading in properly. But we're going to adjust some options here. So we're going to go to our displays, then our layout options, which will display all the Invatu options here. Of course, as you can see below, you can also display fan art or screenshots in the background as well. So I encourage you to download awesome images that you can see in the background. So once we go back, we can see that all our artwork is loaded in properly. We can scroll through these games and know that the artwork is placed where it's supposed to be. But we're not done yet. We have one last thing to do, our system selection. So as you can see, the only way that we can properly select the system is either by going left or right. Every time we select B or go back, we get an option to exit attract mode. But we don't want that. We want to have a system selection. So we're going to go back to the main menu, scroll down to general, and select to show, and select system selection. Next we're going to head to the display option, and we're going to hit display options menu and select the flat blue theme. And now we're going to go all the way back to our systems. And as you can see, there's a lot of static going on. And that means we have to configure our artwork. So as you can see, there are some folders made, but we're going to make some new ones. We're going to add some icons and some video snaps that are going to be played while you select a system. So follow along on the screen and download the proper artwork and videos to show while you're selecting a system. You may also select enabled for menu videos in case you don't want logos to be displayed. But I recommend this if your computer is a little bit more powerful than the usual fare. If nothing's displayed, make sure that your artwork has the same names as your emulators that you made in your emulators folder. But once they've loaded in correctly, then that should be it. There's more to explain for customization options, and like I said, the forum is great if you want to jump in into more track mode customization options, such as sound effects for whenever you're selecting a game, or new themes that are really awesome to check out. Something that can go in any arcade that you design or configure, you can do in attract mode. But with that, just go back to general and select full screen, and you should have a big beautiful arcade to display for the entire world to see. So show off your skills in Mario or Crash and do it up. Do kids still say do it up now? I'm not sure. I'm such an old man! Thanks for watching this long video. I hope you got something out of it. I'll be going into depth on attract mode a little bit more, and into MAME in general. If you want to see my emulation station tutorial, check out the previous video I made. Otherwise, binge watch some tutorials while you're at it. I also have a coffee account and a Patreon account in case you want to support the channel other than viewing it. It would greatly be appreciated if you did, but these videos will always be up for free no matter what. Now if you excuse me, I gotta keep dying in Cuphead. It's so hard, but so damn lovable.